All right, um, I showed you an active probe in an earlier video. I'll try to remember to link it. Um, that one was pretty old school and fairly large, um, but 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 certainly usable and 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 fine. Uh, I ended up buying a more modern, more modern one, maybe a decade later or something, uh, which is this model. This is a Tektronics P sixty two hundred two A, and it is much much more compact. So it. it it's, it's pretty nice. Um, I think I paid $50 for this. I think I paid $40 for the other one, $50 for this one. So they're both both great deals. But this one's super tiny, uh, has offset, uh, fine, fine, coarse and fine uh, offset adjustments. Uh, you can do positive offsets, negative offsets. Um, you can set this up so that um, you can set it for an output of 50 ohms or not 50 ohms. All right, so the probe itself looks like this, uh, pretty much the same. I'm using the, the same adapter for the ground. Uh, this one says uh, 10 megahertz, two picofarad. So this is a little bit of an upgrade. So, so 10, me 10 micro, micro ohms, I'm sorry, 10, 10 mega ohms. Jeez, I can't even get it right today. 10 mega ohms, two puff. Okay, so 10 mega ohm input resistance and only two puff. So yeah, so it's, it's, it should be a little bit faster and a little bit less loady on the circuit. Uh, it says here 60 volts max. And again, this is a one-to-one -one probe um, as they usually are, I think. Is this a 10-to-1 probe or a one-to-one -one probe? Now I don't remember. Um, I think it's a one-to-one -one probe. Um, anyway, uh, what I really wanted to show today is this is, this is going to be the same as the other one that I show, just a little bit modern, more modern version. But uh, in case you want, or in, you're interested, you probably have seen these all over eBay if you've if you've if you've been watching for them. I'll, I'll put a link here. It is a a DIY version. It seems to be built by this one guy in Russia, <laughs> and he sells them there. And and I ordered one. They're like ten bucks plus shipping, but. Um, they are an FET probe all on one circuit board and and uh, here's the schematic for it so it's very 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 basic there's no offset adjustments that there's very little compensation for it and everything um, so you know it, it's what you would build as as, as a um, as a DIY project and I wanted to see how how okay they were um, so uh, one of the problems is they're just a board and you need to put a cable on them. You need to put a power cable on them. You need to make them more, you know, rugged. Um, so what I did with mine was I um, I put two wires, a, a, a power cable and, and, a, and a coax. This is an SMA coax. The SMA screws onto the board. And then I put two layers of heat shrink on it to try to really protect it. Um, then there is no ground connection, so I put a short little grabby on it, which is not ideal. So it should be able to work this out so that there's two grabbies for the... And then it doesn't come with a probe at the end, so I have some um, I have some pogo pins here. So I did put a pogo pin at the end. I don't remember if it came with one or not, but I had some that were better, so um, I put a pogo pin on it. So, yeah, so let's go ahead and compare these two. Uh, and on a signal and just to see how they do. Um, I think I think this one's going to be fine. It's just it's a bit unruly um, mechanically and the, the grounding there. It's just it's just uh, it's a DIY, right? But if you only have 10 bucks, hey, uh, let's go ahead and try this out. Now you can use these on oscilloscopes or uh, spectrum analyzers too. So um, don't don't forget about that as well. So yeah, let's go ahead and hook these up. The cool thing, uh, well, so this one has, uh, as as uh, as you saw in the schematic, this one has a five volt regular on it. So you need you need you know seven or eight volts to, to power this thing up. So that's kind of an odd voltage. I suppose you could put twelve on it, but then you'd be dropping lots of power and stuff. So better to run eight volts into this thing. So that's a bit of a pain in the butt. Uh, but it is only a single voltage. It isn't not a plus minus voltage. So, so that's nice. Um, this particular one, I showed the first one that I bought. I showed the, I built a little box at the end so you you could connect your own power. Now this one, um, one of the reasons I bought this one is I actually have the power supply for it. So um, as I mentioned in the last video, a lot of times the power comes from the the scope itself. But back when your scope didn't have the power for this thing, you went ahead and you bought a uh, 
you bought an external power supply. Well, I actually happen to have one, uh, this Textonix 1101A. Now, I went ahead and, and, and hacked it so I can use it on the bench at plus five and, and plus minus 15, so it's a nice, it's a nice supply. Um, but uh, I did not remove the actual connector, so this is the connector for the, for, for the probe. Okay, so this is an external power supply just for this oscilloscope probe. It was designed just for this oscilloscope probe. And it supplies plus 5 and plus and minus 15. So you have triple voltages going into this one. So it's a bit fancier. Anyway, I already have the power supply. And so, yeah, I get to use it now. Um, so that's pretty cool. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's hook this thing up and uh, give, it a, give it a go. All right, so I have a, a little oscillator here. And uh, we will... Uh, put ground and signal into it, and uh, then we'll go over here to the oscilloscope. All right, and let's do ahead and do a single shot here. Um, so there's the signal uh, with uh, with this probe, and we could do a measurement of let's see here, add channel one, rise time. So 860 picoseconds, something like that. Um, let's see. Let's get out the other probe. All right. Yeah, we have a signal here. I need to trigger on channel four. There we go, and you can see it's got a little bit of ground bounce in it. I'm moving the little yellow ground wire on. Yeah, see it needs a short ground. It needs a short ground, uh, but we can do a single single sweep of that one too. So yeah, it's a little bit uglier. Um, so you know you get what you pay for, but uh, it does work. We could do a rise time on it here. Um, let's see, channel four. Rise time, yeah, it's not, yeah, it's not, it's too much ringing on it to do the rise time accurately. Um, but it does work. Um, so, you know, if you only have 10 bucks to spend, then yeah, it's probably an okay thing. Uh, would I recommend it? No. Um, why would I not recommend it? It's just mechanically, it's just funky. Uh, the grounds aren't good. Um, uh, you have to put your extra cabling on it and stuff. So if you can find a used Keptonix probe, I, I certainly would recommend that one instead. Um, it, it does allow you to look at signals without any loading on them. Um, it, you still need to pay attention to ground, so that's why this one looks that's why this one looks terrible, um, and the other one looked good. Um, but um, Anyway, I thought it'd be interesting. I know a lot of people might buy these things. A lot of times it just doesn't matter. A lot of times you just want to get a signal into your spectrum analyzer and you just don't want to load down your circuit and having an FET buffer is fine. You really don't care what the waveform looks like. You just need to get the signal through. Um, if you're using it within a oscilloscope, then, then you're going to be a little more picky and then maybe it's not for you.